Okay, good afternoon, uh, Professor David Villosriez. I, I am now on my lesson number 61. Okay, lesson 61 under my channel, under the topic Integral Calculus. The topic now is Volumes. The last time around, I gave you the concepts on how to compute volumes using circular disk. Okay, so I will now give you an example for the computation of volume for a very known uh, object we are using under lower mathematics. Okay, uh, let's proceed guys. <coughs> Lesson number 61 under a topic integral calculus, volume under the circular this method of computation. I will read the problem. Derived by integration. The formula for the volume of a cylinder with radius r and height h. Uh, meaning to say, uh, we got the cylinder, the radius is r and the height, height is h. And we are asked to compute for the formula for taking the volume as a function of radius in height. Okay. Actually, the answer, guys, is a pi r. Sorry for this one. Pi r square s. We will derive this formula. So actually, the <coughs> Formula for taking the volume we are using under lower mathematics for the computation of the volume of a cylinder, which is pi r square h. Actually, the origin of that one is actually from integral calculus. It emanates from integral calculus. It was derived from integral calculus. Okay, uh, let's proceed. We bring out the figure. If I will try to use the circular this method, uh, I prefer that the horizontal area, no, 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 the depression area will be rotated with respect to the y-axis. Okay? If we try to take the volume of this, we get a horizontal slice over here. Then we try to rotate it along the y-axis. So for the meantime, I'm using case number two, using the depression area is horizontal. Okay? It's a horizontal strip. And I will try to rotate this 360 degrees to cover up the total cylinder. Okay? So the configuration of this on the Cartesian coordinate system is something like this. This is the height of the cylinder. And this is the radius of the cylinder. Okay? I draw the cylinder to be symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. Okay? So meaning to say, if I will use a horizontal, horizontal differential area to take for the total volume, I will try to rotate this uh, differential area here, 360 degrees, 360 degrees with respect to the y-axis. Okay, I will rotate this one, one complete revolution to bring out the cylinder. It is something like this, guys. Okay, this is a cylinder, this is the radius R, this is H. So the horizontal slice should be rotated one complete revolution, okay, to cover up the total area of the cylinder. Okay, that is from this point here up to this. At this point here later on we will bring it out because uh, upon reaching the so-called integration process, we should have a lower limit in upper limit to cover up the total cylinder. Okay, guys. I will bring out the coordinates of the cylinder on the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, this point here should be R. The ordinate will be zero. So the coordinates of this point here, this corner is R0. The upper one, it's R and H. The abscissa is R. And the ordinate is actually h. The y value is h. Oh, on the left hand side, uh, since uh, the figure is actually symmetrical, uh, there's no problem. But uh, we could also specify the points on the left. 
on the left hand side uh, it will be negative r negative because it is on the left hand side uh, the second quadrant then the ordinate will be zero so this point is actually negative r and zero the fourth corner of the cylinder it's a uh, negative r and h actually uh, we do not use uh, uh, this coordinates on our computation I, I just bring it out okay so actually we could erase this one we just need uh, this one here and this okay solution using or uh, using the horizontal slice rotated along the y-axis this is the horizontal slice this one I'll bring out this one I will enlarge this one is this this is the radius, right? And this is actually XR minus XM. And the thickness is actually DY. So to compute for the volume, you got the horizontal slice, something like this. So you will uh, rotate this one complete revolution. <laughs> okay? So cover up for the total volume. This is uh, the XR minus XL and this is the Y. See? Uh, we rotate it along the Y axis. Okay? The rotation is something like this. Okay? So if we try to recall the formula under the horizontal slice, uh, the pressure volume is actually pi times the quantity xr minus xl quantity squared times dy i gave you this one the last time around actually we could derive this, derive this. to compute for the volume uh, it should be area area is equal to pi r square right this should be pi times the quantity xr minus xl quantity squared that's the area the area of this so for the to compute for the volume, you multiply that by the thickness. So differential volume now will be equal to pi times the quantity xr minus xl quantity square times dy. It is this. Okay. Where the value of xr? Okay. Uh, this is now where uh, you will bring out your intelligence, guys, for finding the equation of xr and xl. And also the thickness. The, the thickness uh, obviously is dy. It is along the y-axis, right? So there's no problem with this. How about xr? xr is actually the <coughs> abscissa of this uh, side here. And the equation of this is xr is equal to r. This is a vertical line. It's not a complicated curve. It's a straight line. That's why I told you it could be complicated and not complicated, but for a cylinder, XR is not complicated because the equation is actually XR is equal to R. It is this. And how about XL? The one on the left. Luckily, uh, XL is uh, actually coincides with the y-axis. And the equation of XL is actually equal to zero. This was the zero on the concepts I've given you the last time around. XL is zero. So actually the only problem for a cylinder is XR. But uh, luckily XR is equal to the radius. Okay, it's not a complicated one. It's not a curve. It's a straight line. Okay, that's why I told you it could be complicated and also com uh, complicated. Okay, uh, we will go back to the differential volume. Therefore, differential volume will be pi times the quantity xr is actually small r, the radius, minus zero quantity squared times dy. Therefore, for a cylinder, the differential volume is pi r squared times dy. Okay? Uh, I got a note over here, r is constant. Why constant? Uh, for any given cylinder, the radius is constant, right? So I place it here, constant. The lower limit will be uh, we are now specifying the limit of dy. Uh, dy should move from 0 to h to cover up the total volume of the cylinder. So actually the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is h. dy should move from 0 to h to cover up the total cylinder. 
Okay, therefore, uh, going back to this formula here, then try to integrate both sides. Okay? The integral of the differential volume equal to the integral. Okay? The integral. We will now place the lower and upper limit. This is from 0 to h. 0. 0 to h of pi r square dy. But uh, pi r square, pi is a constant, radius is constant, so we could bring it out of the integral side. Therefore, volume now equal to pi r square, the integral from 0 to h of dy. And uh, this is an easy money, guys. The integral of the differential of y, okay, we pass by the complicated integration uh, problems before uh, we go to the application. So the integral of the differential of y is just y. Easy money, right? <laughs> it's not even an algebraic, uh, al uh, by using algebraic substitution or uh, what you call this partial fraction or other things. It's just the integral of the y, okay? And the solution is actually when the integral goes miss the uh, differential sign, they will try to cancel out each other. So the integral of the differential of y is just y. Okay? I will put it back. The integral of the differential of y is just y. Okay? So volume now will be rewriting this one, pi r square, open quantity y with the limit from 0 to h. This is pi r square. Putting the upper limit, this is h minus the lower limit, which is zero, but this is zero already. Uh, that zero got no effect on the final answer, right? So the formula for taking the volume of a cylinder as a function of the radius r and h, in general, okay, volume is pi r square h. So the formula we are using under lower mathematics to compute for the volume of any cylinder as a function of the radius and altitude h, volume is pi r square h. Okay, so you now know guys where this problem originated. Actually it emanates from the so-called so concept of integral calculus. All the formulas we are using in this world emanates from integral calculus. It was derived from integral calculus. Okay. So volume now, before I will go this afternoon, volume is pi r square h for a cylinder. Okay, that's it guys. Uh, it's uh, very interesting. Okay. We got no problem uh, solving the problem because of the integration process. It's very simple one. So the problem is actually on the setting up of the differential volume and uh, the placing of the correct value of XR and XL and also the lower and upper limit to uh, cover up the total cylinder. Since we are using a horizontal slice, Y should move from 0 to H. That's why actually our limit here is actually from 0 to H. Okay, guys. Uh, good afternoon.